is it visible to you all yes ma'am it is visible ah oh, thank you very nice so my topic uh, for this webinar uh, is on ultra reliable low latency communication requirements and enabling techniques so coming to the topic uh, we all know that the last decade one minute please can i switch my video ma'am you can turn up the video the it will okay. takes more bandwidth so please okay. fine that's fine okay so the as we all know the last decade has experienced a never ending growth in global mobile data traffic so as you see the illustration here that is the global mobile data traffic which is forecasted by itu you see here that the overall mobile data traffic is estimated to grow uh, at an annual rate of around 55% from 2020 to 2030 and to reach uh, almost 607 extra bytes in 2025 and 5016 extra bytes in uh, 2030 so the fifth generation 5g is the latest attempt that brings mobile communication technology up to this speed but uh, it is expected that uh, 5g will also reach its limit by 2030 and of course the chase continues you know so uh, this as you all uh, aware that 5g will enable us to realize this vision vision is very clear that information is a finger away and everything will be kept in touch so it will definitely penetrate into every single element of our future society creating an all dimensional user centered information ecosystem it will break the limitation of time and space to enable an immersive and interactive user experience it will also shorten the distance between human and things basically you can say so uh, 5g will implement a seamless integration to achieve easy and smart interconnection between people and all things so the two main market drivers in the future development of mobile communications are mobile internet and internet of things basically so that will trigger a large range of use cases you see here in this illustration down here the large range of use cases i need not elaborate here you can see uh, very well through this illustration so so we can say that uh, a mobile and connected society is basically emerging in the near future basically to say seeing the illustration so uh, and uh, coupled with this rise of iot internet of things machine machine type communication 5g will offer so much more compared to your uh, traditional cellular networks basically so the myriad of emerging massively data intensive use cases and applications if you name you can name a few that uh, multi way virtual meeting with holographic so the complete uh, scenario will be changed of our meeting in future basically then virtual and augmented reality and most important is an upcoming this brain communication interface teleportation remote surgery requiring all this require this the latency reliability and data rate requirements all these future applications so this is of course beyond the capacity you can say now looking at this use cases all these are uh, these requirements of latency reliability and data rate they are beyond the capacity of 5g systems so the next step 
change in uh, 6G, of course, it will be coming up. That will need to be called up and to fully support all this type of services here. So building upon the 5G vision, 6G will continue to empower our uh, cities. So uh, it will become super smart and fully connected with a plethora of autonomous services as you see here. So basically human life will experience widespread proliferation of humanoid robotic and intelligent devices which are capable of decision making with uh, minimum human intervention. So uh, this will result in the uh, uh, demise of a significant reduction, you can say significant reduction of traditional mobile or handheld devices. So uh, in uh, that era, in the future B 5G era, you can say everything around us will be very intelligent, giving rise to the concept of Internet of intelligent things, IOIT. And uh, which is basically supported by the artificial intelligent capability embedded in almost all levels from network orchestrations, uh, you can say management uh, to coding and signal processing, then manipulation of smart structure and data mining for services, uh, service based context of our communications, all types for all these types. So, Moving to the next slide. So what we anticipate? So we anticipate that uh, several problems like if uh, if uh, today's network are used to handle the explosive development of mobile internet and IoT, that is you can say the energy efficiency level, overall cost per bit, complexity of network deployment, maintenance cannot effectively handle thousand times traffic growth because you see here that the traffic uh, area traffic capacity uh, what area traffic capacity has to be supported in 5g so looking at those so uh, the massive number of connected devices again coexistence of multiple uh, radio access technologies cause increased complexity and of course it will degrade the user experience so I, I, I can say that here the existing networks cannot realize the accurate monitoring of network resources and effective uh, awareness of services. So therefore, uh, they cannot intelligently fulfill the diversified requirements of future uses and services because uh, widely distributed and fragmented spectrum also will cause interference and coexistence complexity. So to solve all these problems, 5G should have the uh, capabilities like uh, uh, that means we want to achieve sustainability with 5G. How this is possible? So in terms of network con construction and deployments, you can say 5G networks need to provide higher network capacity and better coverage and along with decreasing the complexity and cost of network deployment. So uh, we need a flexible and scalable architecture also to adapt the diverse needs of users and services. So stronger device connected capabilities are needed also to deal with the access requirements and uh, because of huge amount of IoT devices. So now Coming to this key capabilities, that means the performance requirement and efficiency requirement basically define the key capabilities. This two. So you can see a very nice uh, blooming flower illustration here. I like, I personally like this blooming flower illustration. I also give this in my class slides. So the petals and leaves uh, basically rely on each other. OK, so the petals represent the six key capabilities. You can see here mobility, end to end latency, connection density, user experience data rate, traffic volume intensity, big data rate. OK, 
and the leaves you can see the leaves represent the three key capabilities in terms of efficiency and uh, for sustainable development of 5g this should be guaranteed okay so the top of each petal you can see the top of each petal uh, means the maximum value of the corresponding capability so 5g system must uh, dramatically outperform previous generation systems it should support uh, the uh, first one is the user experience data rate you can uh, see that what are the key performance indicators so the peak data rate so basically the peak data rate is 20 gbps as for itr and user experience data rate 0.1 to 1 gbps so what is user experience data rates that is the minimum achievable data rate for a user in real network okay network environment basically so connect again connection density that is per kilometer square that is the that defines the total number of connected devices per unit area so also end to end latency that is the duration between the transmission of a data packet from the source node and the successful reception at destination node. Now coming to the traffic volume in density that is BPS per kilometer square. That is the total data rate of all users per unit area. And when you come, you come to the mobility part, so it is basically the relative speed between receiver and transmitter under certain performance requirement. So uh, the uh, user experience data rate, all key performance indicators are defined here in this table. So uh, the key efficiency indicators, as we see here, the three key efficiency indicators. One is the spectrum efficiency, that is BPS per hertz per cell or BPS per hertz per kilometer square you can define. Then the data that is the uh, next one is the data throughput for that defines basically the data throughput for unit of spectrum resource per cell. That is the spectrum efficiency or you can you may say per unit area also. Now coming to the energy efficiency here that is the bit per joule which is the number of bits that can be transmitted per joule of energy. And coming to the third one, that is the cost efficiency. That is the number of bits that can be transmitted per unit cost. So uh, among these requirements, the user experience data rate, connection, uh, connection density and end-to-end -end latency are the most fundamental one you can say. So 5G needs to improve significantly uh, the if it has to improve the efficiency of a network deployment and operation and if you compare with the 4G 5G should have at least three to five times improvement on spectrum efficiency and more than 100 times improvement on energy as you see here 100 times improvement on the energy and cost efficiency. So all these key capabilities may uh, to some extent be important for most use cases and the relevance of certain key capabilities may be significantly different depending on the use cases or the scenarios you can say. Okay. Uh, you see now here a very interesting slide here. So but the notations are already explained to you in previous lectures i know still uh, this is my beginning first slide about this lecture so i have to introduce this so uh, a 5g not only it will not only be a business as usual evolution of the 4g cellular mobile networks uh, with new spectrum bands we had discussed a lot about the in the some lectures uh, discussed about the new spectrum bands. So I I am skipping that. So higher spectral efficiency, high peak throughputs, 
but it will target new services and business models. So uh, all these are to be developed in close collaboration with vertical industries and imply new requirements and new ways of thinking, building and managing the network. So the analysis of the needs and requirement of all these verticals are uh, uh, they they it has led the METIS project, you know, the METIS that is the European Union project, mobile and wireless communication enablers for the 2020 information society to lay the foundation of 5G. So basically the METIS one project for and the forums such as uh, next generation mobile network, which NGMN Alliance and ITUR. So these three, they uh, considered the following uh, given here, the very main 5G service type. The first one is the enhanced mobile broadband. And the second one is the massive machine type communication, MMTC. And third one is the ultra reliable low latency communication. So coming to the first one, the Enhanced mobile broadband uh, often uh, it is also uh, required. It requires actually it is used for both extremely high data. It requires extremely high data rates and low latency communication maybe in some area, but basically reliable broadband access over large coverage area. And you know that uh, we have uh, in the course of lecture many physical layer technologies were introduced. Uh, which like uh, higher order modulation transmission. You may use carrier aggregation, cell densifications uh, via heterogeneous networks, MIMO and massive MIMO, basically massive MIMO in applications. So these physical uh, layer technologies are the key enablers for this. Then coming to the massive machine type communication, which uh, require wireless connectivity for up to tens of billions of network enabled devices. As you can see here, the applications, the various use scenario. So the scalable connectivity for, uh, for an increasing number of devices uh, with uh, connection, high connection density, that is for wider area coverage, and deep indoor penetrations, those are the key priorities of this uh, machine machine type communications. So it is mainly used that is for used for large number of um, connecting large number of machine type devices, all MMTC based services such as sensing, tagging, metering and monitoring. So uh, which require high connection density and better energy efficiency. So uh, these are the uh, uh, types. And the third one, which is the ultra reliable low latency communication. So it is it has to give a very resilient communication link that is for the you know that the vehicle to X here vehicle to X communication, industrial control automation applications as you see here. So these are the application domain is given here. So uh, so all these types. So we must understand that we need a common RAN that accommodates all three service types. These three service types uh, to make it uh, economically and environmentally sustainable. OK, hence uh, we need a RAN design. So that has to be performed towards a set of 5G use cases that typically combine multiple service types. And uh, you can also see in the service category uh, here clearly given uh, human to human, human to machine and machine to machine. So exactly they are also category you can also divide or uh, pick columns like that under that service category. Okay. So. Yeah, and and uh, we may discuss that these are the evolution of standards to deliver on the 5G vision. You can see here uh, the most important release 15, which established 5G new radio technology foundation. Then uh, and uh, that in that 
uh, the sub gigahertz, six, six sub six gigahertz with massive MIMO that was introduced. Uh, so the initial focus was enhanced mobile broadband service. So the uh, it offered a flexible framework that also we are going to discuss uh, in uh, later lectures. Then came uh, the release 16, which ex which expanded to new use cases and industries. So the main important thing is that integrated access for back home. So uh, this one enabled 5G and our IIoT with e URLLC. So next came the release 17. These are the like continued expansion and 18 later. So all this uh, that new spectrum of 52.6 gigahertz that millimeter wave band that came into existence. So here uh, it. It, offer, it uh, offered a more capable, flexible IAB, integrated access backup. So uh, this, uh, uh, the various use cases, the new use cases also is supported. So these are the evolution of standards to deliver on the 5G vision. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a table uh, showing the various scenario and the a uh, key performance indicators or uh, and it gives a status uh, data uh, statistics is, uh, sorry it gives a statistics like the values of end to end latency communication service al availability reliability for all this type of scenario okay like that so for all this type of scenario so you may refer to this uh, table uh, for to look into the use cases and the requirements okay so the Challenge now we are we are ultra reliable and low latency communication is a new service category in 5G. So and it came into existence because we want to accommodate emerging services and application. Stringent latency and reliability requirement. So in order to support your LLC, there should be both the Evolutionary and revolutionary changes in the air interface that is 5G and up. I'll also provide the physical layer challenges and solution in 5G air downlink, highlighting the key requirements of URLLC in later slides, of course. Now, uh, achieving this ultra reliable and low latency communication, what? Because it represents one of the major challenges facing 5G networks. So URLLC introduced um, various type of challenges in terms of system design. So while, uh, you know, while uh, enhanced mobile broadband aims at high spectral efficiency, it can also rely on hybrid automatic repeat request, that is the HARC retransmission to achieve high reliability. But uh, this is, uh, however, not the case for URLLC due to hard latency constraints. Moreover, if uh, you want to ensure URLLC at a link level in controlled en environment, that is relatively easy. Doing it in a, at a network level or uh, and over a wide area in remote scenario, that is in uh, that that becomes extremely difficult because of uh, the local area use cases, latency is mainly due to the wireless media access, whereas wide area scenarios suffer from latency due to intermediate node or pass, again front hall or back hall, and also so also the either core or cloud environment. So, and you know that the typical uh, block error rate of a 4G systems, uh, earlier 4G, the existing 4G systems, that is 10 to the power minus 2. You can, uh, you are able to achieve that uh, through the channel coding, that is the turbo codes and retransmission mechanism via HARP. But uh, if you say, uh, by contrast, the performance requirement of your LNC, they are more stringent with a target uh, block error rate of almost uh, 10 to the power minus 9 to 10 to the power minus 5, depending on the use cases. So from a physical layer perspective, the URLLC design is challenging as it ought to satisfy two 
conflicting requirements like low latency and ultra high reliability. And on the other hand, minimizing the latency mandates the use of sort packets, which in turn causes a severe degradation in the channel coding gain. On the other hand, if you want to ensure reliability, that will require more resources. OK, so what will happen? So more uh, resource parity, redundancy, retransmission, those elevate again, increase the latency. So time domain redundancy. So uh, the URL LC warrants uh, system design, which is tailored to the unique requirement of uh, different verticals for which the outage capability are also of interest. So this ranges from users, including cell edge users that is connected to the radio access network, which must receive equal grade of service. It's also to vehicles reliably transmitting their safety message. And you may say in industrial plants whereby sensors, actuators and controllers they communicate within very short cycles for real time monitoring of plant or process conditions under those circumstances. So if, uh, if you if you give an uh, I'm, I'm giving an instance. So the targeted one milliseconds latency time or even lower is crucial in the use of haptic feedback and real time sensors to allow doctors to examine or maybe doing a surgery on patient bodies from a remote locations, remote operating room. Similarly, if you take an example of construction industry, they can operate heavy machinery remotely and minimize their potential hazard. So uh, let's say uh, if you are watching some games in television using VR, virtual reality headset, which allows 360 degree courtside view, so you can feel the intensity of crowd in a, from comfort of your home. So basically what I mean to say the end to end latency for all augmented virtual and immersive reality, which we call XR represents a serious challenge that ought to be tackled. Likewise, ultra high reliability in terms of successful which may us uh, 10 to the power minus 9 help us uh, in the uh, factory automate to in automating factories, assuring uh, remote monitoring and control basically. So undoubtedly these technological advances will only be possible with a scalable, reliable and low latency network. So here uh, I see here in the uh, this illustration illustration gives exactly the control of remote devices as I just explained to you uh, the where benefits and exactly what benefits we are getting. And as I just explained to you the three key requirements of uh, uh, URLC. Number one the latency, ultra high reliability, and third one, which is in uh, same importance also, that is coexistence with EMBB MMTC, machine machine type communication. So the key requirements are looked up to us uh, when we discuss the uh, challenges we face as for the use case. Now, uh, coming to the ideal, some uh, definitions uh, about this. So, coming to the latency requirement. So, first one is uh, we can classify like this exactly what is latency requirement and deal with each one uh, in the uh, request for requirement files. So, first one is the latency requirement. So, uh, we can define uh, the latency like this, like end plane latency, user plane latency and control plane latency. So end to end latency that uh, includes the over the air transmission delay, queuing delay, processing computing delay, then retransmission when needed. So ensuring 
our round trip latency of let's say one milliseconds, and because of the because uh, the speed of light constraints is three hundred kilometers per hour, so the maximum distances at which a receiver uh, can be located is approximately you know, one fifty kilometers. So that's the end to end latency. So coming to the instant latency, uh, the is defined as one way time it takes to successfully deliver an application layer packet or message from the radio protocol layer ingress point to the radio protocol ingress point of the radio interface. In either you may say it may be in public or only. In the network for a given service in unloaded condition. Okay, assuming assuming uh, user equipment is in active state, of course. So the minimum requirements for user latency are four milliseconds for ELC and one millisecond for URLS, assuming a single user. And for one control plane latency. Which is defined as transition time from a most battery efficient state, that is the ideal state, to the start of continuous data transfer, that is the active state we call. So the minimum requirement for continuous latency is 20 milliseconds. Next, uh, this is the Illustration you can say this is the cause uh, of latency components in physical layer downlink scenario in your LLC service. Because I'll, I'll first uh, explain to you about this. So, this I must say that you uh, will it's in a service category to support because it's a service category which is supporting all latency sensitive services. Plus, uh, we have been uh, have given all examples in previous slides. So this latency sensitive services this is the time it for a human perception or reaction is in the order of n sub milliseconds. So the packet transmission time for the mission critical applications need to be in the order of tens or tens to hundreds of microseconds basically. So uh, if you consider the 4G LTE network, which has been significantly improved from 3G networks or your 3G network, so end-to-end -end latency is, uh, is still in the range of 30 to 100 milliseconds. Because, because uh, this is because uh, the backbone network uh, typically uses the best default delivery mechanism and hence is not optimized for the Mission critical service. So to reduce the end to end latency, uh, the fundamental change in both the less link and also in the backbone network. Because in the backbone link, uh, we are uh, for that we have to because of the backbone link, SDN uh, the SDN software different network and virtual network slicing we are using to construct the private connection to the dedicated URL service. So this, uh, this type of uh, you know, wellness link, over it should be reduced and transmission mechanism need to be streamlined also. And uh, because uh, a large portion of transmission latency is due to uh, comfort type of signaling. That is the ground and fire signal, you can say. So it takes almost 0 0.4 milliseconds per schedule. So it is not so efficient to incorporate a low latency packet transmission scheme in the current T system. That's flat now. So uh, in, I can give an example here. So uh, when we design a soft packet whose transmission latency is 0.5 milliseconds, so more than 60% resources should be wasted. For the so to support your LLC, therefore many parts of physics here should be redesigned. So that is the whole point uh, of this slide. So now uh, we'll discuss how uh, 
the physical layer, in physical layer downlink scenario, what are the that is the requirement, how it can be uh, related. So the physical layer, you see, as you see here, it is uh, clearly given here, the TN here, physical layer latency, that can be divided into four, five components as given here, which is given clearly here, pre-processing, packet pre-processing, data transmission, processing at the device, acknowledgement, then successful or success or retransmission. So uh, this is the downlink scenario. So the, the, uh, and the, the, uh, the, t, t, the, the time, time to transmit, t, time to transmit, it is the time to transmit, which corresponds to the time to transmit back this t, t. Time to transmit a packet and the PROP processing from that is the signal propagation time from the transmitter to the receiver. Okay. And next one is the uh, T processing. This total T processing, this T processing. So that is processing at the device corresponding to the time. That is the time to perform it as say. Encoding and decoding, and also the panel estimation initial transmission. So that is T processing. Then comes the T RTS. Okay, that is the time caused by the retransmission. You can see here. It's the retransmission corresponds to the retransmission. And T signal, that is the pre-processing time. For the signaling exchange, such as connection request, scheduling, grant, then uh, channel training, and feedback, and queuing delay. So the, uh, the, the physical layer that we see is due to all these five components, which are uh, uh, and factors uh, uh, affecting the latency light. Of course, we hear the transition time. And backward time, processing time taken by the core network and delay to the transition between the core network and the internet club. So, in uh, response to the, that means in order to make a stringent latency requirement, a packet transmission time, that is the uh, time to transmit TTT, that should be uh, in the order of hundreds of microseconds, okay? Since uh, the time to transmit of the current 4 GLT system is one in period, we need a new frame structure. That was the necessity. A new frame structure reducing the time to transmit. That in, got introduced to this reason. And uh, also, since the latency caused by the channel estimation and feedback would be a bottleneck for the URL transmission. Our transmission scheme that does not rely on the channel information needs to be considered. So these are the physical layer downlink scenario in URL service. So coming to the reliability now. Uh, the reliability as the in general, how we define the reliability. Here the reliability we can define as the probability as a data size, uh, let's say, D is successfully transferred within a time data time period. So that is reliability stipulates that the packets are successfully delivered and the latency bound is satisfied. So uh, the various definitions also like uh, reliability and say the capability of transmitting a given amount of traffic within a brief time duration and that is very important. So the uh, minimum requirement for reliability is 10 to, that is, uh, 10 to the power 1 to 10 to the power minus so probability of transmitting a layer 2 protocol that you need of 32 bytes within one milliseconds. Because the reliability for no, that is defined as the transmission error probability 
giving delay ovulation and property packet dropping property then comes the control channel reliability which is defined as the probability of successfully decoding the scheduling graph or can see the meta graph or the meta graph okay then uh, availability that is the probability that a given service is available that is complex so for instance you can say 9.99 availability is that one user among 10,000 does not receive proper progress. That is the availability. So we underscore the fact that your LNC service requirements are going to end, whereas the TCPP and ITU requirements focus on the one-way radio latency over 5G radio networks. Okay? So uh, the various factors affecting reliability like uh, uh, due to the college with other users due to uncoordinated channels and as I just pointed out that is the coexistence with the systems in the same frequency band that will be uh, affecting the reliability maybe interference from users in addressing channel okay again Doppler shift from moving versus and uh, the difficulty in synchronization, maybe outdated channel speed information, then time and channel effects, or delayed packet reception. So these factors affect the reliability. Now, uh, now coming to the coexistence, the third one, third service requirement, that is the coexistence of your LSC with EMP and MMTC. Now, uh, first of all, what I will explain, what is the coexistence problem in the 3GPP and uh, the So basically, uh, to the, basically, because there is latency constraint for your LC packet transmission, so the ongoing EMP and MMTC packet should be stopped. Okay, so that is, that means, uh, we can say in the URL system is initiated in the middle of uh, EMPB transport. Uh, some of the symbols of EMPB are replaced exactly by the symbols of URL back. So, this interruption is not reported to the mobile device in use. So, the quality of the EMPB and MMTC service will be naturally degraded. And this is the coexistence problem in we are coexistence problem in the FGPP. So uh, it is a scenario here, the slide that gives the uh, illustration of multi service coexistence scenario. You can see the, the URLC, EMPP, and MMTC. So this is a coexisting scenario and the various uh, use cases. So uh, now I'll uh, explain the coexistence uh, with the, this MBB and uh, uh, MMTC basically. So then there is a URLC service request with maybe in the scheduling period or in the middle of EMBB and uh, MMT transmission, the vegetation should uh, transmit you accuracy back immediately. Okay. Now, in, uh, you can say that is to support your LC packet transmission, the ongoing MPP and MMTC packet should be stopped without notice. So, you can see here the here you can see the transmission of this MPP and MMTC packet in sufferable and scheduling this LC packet in PMB packet in a single level. That is basically the overlay of your LC. So when we transport down here, we can see here transport the three code books that is transmitted for the EMBB service. Uh, the each code book is mapped sequentially to the scheduled time frequency or uh, so when the URL service is initiated in the middle, you can see that it is initiated in the middle of the 
EMTP uh, transport block. So what happens here? So as you observe here, part of the symbols in the third code book here in the third code book that are replaced by the symbols of the URLC packet. And since this interrupt is not reported to the mobile devices in use, so what happened? The reception quality of the MVP and MTC service will be degraded severely. And this problem is for the coexistence problem. Okay. So it is a serious concern of non-URL services so that a proper mechanism to protect the ongoing services should be used. Now uh, in contrast to the you can say that okay so the three major failure solutions in 5G and R to support URLC. Okay, that is the, uh, the in 5G and R. Number one is the package structure to minimize latency, flexible package structure, then a flexible frame design to support the dynamic change of the resource grid based on the latency requirement. Third one is the latency sensitivity scheduling and for the overlay the URL service into EMP and MMTC service support diverse service well. So in contrast to you can say you may think of that if you see in contrast to 4D and D system latency reliability and to put should be jointly considered in general. Okay. Uh, so that there should be a fundamental change in the physical layer architecture, I mean, packet slot and fit. Uh, specifically, if you say uh, a latency for the a latency sensitive packet structure, that is needed because for fast decoding process and flexible frame structure to support the dynamic change of the resource grid based on the latency requirement. So these are needed. And also when the URL service is initiated, the URL packet should be transmitted instantly without delay. So for that, uh, a scheduling scheme minimizing the transmit latency of the URL packet should be introduced. That is the third one, what is story, latency sensitive user state. For, uh, uh, you are, uh, since the latency requirement uh, might not be satisfied by hard based uh, retransmission, this material of packet is being solved. So, for that, a mechanism that significantly reduces the retransmission latency is required. Okay. So, besides those, uh, an approach to use multiple radio to reduce the latency, uh, it can be employed also. So mm -hmm. basic idea that means using the, uh, to get that means you can uh, all radio access technology providing minimum latency amongst all possible options. It may include 4G, 5G, NR, Wi-Fi, and typically uh, 802 uh, tech standards. So using all this together with the device-to-device -device communication, the network latency can be reduced substantially. Okay. Now, uh, uh, the physical solutions for your LLC, so includes all this as discussed. So, packet infrastructure to minimize latency, and uh, also we can uh, include multiple C schemes to overlay the RLC services into EMBB and MMTC service and approaches to deal with the coexistence issues. So uh, these are the physical layer solutions in 5G and now coming to the flexible frame structure. And you know one direct option is to reduce the uh, of this uh, you can see that 
uh, your LLC factory design that uh, minimizing the uh, processing latency. We discussed the uh, processing latency and the time to task uh, latency. Now, uh, this, as you uh, remember, this uh, processing, uh, processing latency consists of time to receive packets, then acquire error information and extract the cartoon scheduling information. And also decoding the adapters and checking errors. So, you know that in LTE system, you know, this is the square structure. In the LTE system, a square shape packet structure that is popularly used for efficient utilization of the spectrum under the channel fitting. But in 5 GNR, it is contrast, quite contrast here in 5 GNR system. A non square packet, you can see here, non square packet, which is best sequence access. That is used at this slide. Since this structure minimizes the transmission latency, then to transmit transmission. And also to use the latency processing. Three components packet that is pilot on pilot control and data part. Three uh, pilot, pilot control and data. They will group together to make a pipeline processing of the channel acquisition, control channel decoding, and data inspection as given in this figure. So uh, another important issue I can see here, uh, con it, which need to be considered, is to use advanced channel coding. So in 4G systems, two types of approaches have been developed to ensure reliability requirement. So the first type is the channel coding scheme, that is stop and convolution code with cyclic redundancy tech, and uh, that is for large size packets. I'm saying large size packet, basically. And the second type is to use a simple code that is the station and drill muller code with, without CRC for the super size packets. That is for the four system. So in five channel, we are using the pole, we are using the polar code and the LDBC, that is the low density parity check code. They have been adopted for the enhancement of control. So over, over the years, actually, many efforts to improve the decoding performance and uh, hence the computational complexity. So also the processing latency how to improve of uh, these codes, uh, such as um, you may say success cancellation, that is list decoding of polar codes and non-binary LDBC decoding schemes. So many schemes have been um, uh, Design uh, and uh, uh, a smart spectral coding that is BC that is based on short packet transitions and based on principle of consistency. It has uh, given a very good performance over the previous ones, so it has also adopted. So, because uh, it is a very well known advantage of compression scheme that an input vector can be recovered using a smaller number of uh, measurement or resources. Okay? This is the computational complexity of the sparse recovery algorithms is proportional to the sparsity. So the latency cost by the series based algorithms uh, would be very marginal. That is the advantage. So I'm not going into deep into that. Rather, let me again come back to the flexible frame design for UFLC. Okay, so uh, one direct uh, option is to reduce the time to transmit latency and uh, how we can reduce by reducing the symbol period. Okay, so how to reduce the symbol period? That is the question. So when the, you can say when the frequency band is above 6 gigahertz, millimeter wave. So due to, you can, you can visualize that due to path loss, uh, the cell radius would be much smaller than of the conventional cell system. So what will happen? What will happen to the channel delay spread? So again, that will affect the 
of China delisted. So in this case, by controlling the South Korea space, okay, we can reduce the symbol area. Okay. So as shown here in this diagram. So for instance, you can see that the symbol length can be reduced on the uh, half. That is 72 to is 36, 35%, which is approximately 36 microseconds. So now the symbol length uh, here we can reduce from 72 microseconds to 36 microseconds. How we apply the sub carrier spacing from 50 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz? Right? So, in what we learned is the implication. So the time to transmit one subframe can be reduced by half. Okay, from one milliseconds to 0.5 milliseconds. However, when frequency is uh, below 6 gigahertz, this uh, option might not be desirable due to large display spread. Okay, so in this case, one can alternatively consider reducing the PDI of the packet. For example, Using let's using millis mini slot label through three symbols and in slot level uh, seven symbols transmission. The time for transmission uh, can be reduced uh, to one forty two to forty one and five hundred microseconds. So uh, in short, by controlling the symbol period and also the number of symbols in a packet. To three symbols mini slot level and seven symbols in slot level. Okay, so um, doing that, so controlling the symbol field and the number of symbols in packet and transmit being smaller than one microsecond, less than one microsecond, we can achieve. So this is so many things here. So to support this flexible frame structure. We need, we need an advanced receiver equipped with fast tracking, mixing, and simultaneous decoding functions all be incorporated. So, uh, here also you can see the with the text scale and subframe with four scale numerology. You can see a nice fancy and frame and stable form. The time to transmit with all numerology is convenient in the slot and table. Some message is 5G and the dynamic numerology. You can say 5G now is uh, transfer dynamic numerology adaptation. Okay. So, uh, second, uh, what? This uh, is the generally abruptly. Um, that means it is generated abruptly. So how to schedule this into the existing service? That is very important. Is to in the design of system design, as already mentioned. So uh, two schemes are in, uh, in 3GPP LR standard, uh, schemes are instant schedule and number two is the reservation based scheduling. Okay. So, in the instant scheduling, any ongoing data transmission is interrupted to initiate the URLC packet. So, this product is effective in reducing URLC access time. But what is the limitation? So it will cause a severe performance degradation. So uh, this approach between performance degradation point services that uh, uh, research is taking place in many in that direction. How to uh, improve the performance? Okay, so how to mitigate the performance degradation of ongoing services? So in the reservation based scheduling. The number two the reservation scheduling in this scheme, the URLC resources are reserved prior to the data scheduling. So basically, two types of reservation schemes. Once the semi-static reservation scheme, 
one is the dynamic reservation scheme. So two types in uh, here. So the, the semester reservation scheme, the position frequently broadcast the configuration of the frame structure, uh, such as uh, frequency numerology service period. In the dynamic reservation scheme, the information on the utility resources is updated frequently. Okay? That's the major difference. Using the control panel of a scheduled user. Okay, for example, you can say um, that uh, suppose an MPB package consists of 14 symbols. And then uh, 10 symbols are used for MPB transmission. And the rest are reserved for URL system. So, what is the drawback or left of this approach? So, the drawback of this approach is that there is no URL transmission in the scheduled period. What will happen? The resources reserved for the URL service will be wasted. Something. So, if you compare it with the semi static reservation, the dynamic reservation requires additional control over it because it needs to indicate the reservation information. Okay. And um, this uh, also a way to ensure the reliability of control signaling is a must. So in this diagram, in the right hand side diagrams, average uh, latency. Uh, average uh, latency of your latency scheduling schemes and the impact on EMDB average throughput uh, is demonstrated. Okay. So here, the one, uh, so the throughput, uh, as you see that the throughput, uh, instant, uh, sorry, instant scheduling strategy performs the reservation based scheduling in terms of average latency. But it causes, you can see it causes a loss in the EMB devices. So, also you observe that here the dynamic reservation performs the semi static reservation in terms of latency. Okay. You can see the, uh, that one. So, because uh, then faster resource allocation, that is the reason. Uh, come to the solutions to the coexistence problem. Uh, the, uh, in, uh, the, you can see the holy grail like, in order to support this well, to mitigate the performance degradation of interpreted services. That is the important issue in the physical design. So we have already discussed the physical press structure that is this problem. Uh, but due to implementation complexity and dumbness of the URL packet arrival, a more deliberate solution is required actually because considering the real deployment scenario. So in the IPNR, two approaches are uh, introduced. One is the reactive strategy and number two is the proactive strategy. Okay. So as uh, it is compared here, the reactive and proactive strategy is given the uh, in the reactive strategy. The main idea is to give a priority to your while ensuring the reliability of the other channel interrupted by your So uh, basically, which is uh, are updated in 3 GPNR. So first one is the PSR indicator transmission, and second one is the retransmission of the selected code. So this uh, in this PSR indicator transmission which actually the station indicates which resources are used for the URL transmission. And let's uh, recall uh, that uh, as we discussed in the previous slide, that the URLC packet is just in the frequencies. Okay. We have seen the session. So, the URLC transmission will interrupt the 
whole system bandwidth and can still degrade the all data can is in use. So to notify this event to the scheduled user, the PlayStation will not take pre-assign indicator. That will consist of uh, time, maybe time of frequency, maybe time and frequency information of the interruption. So this Emerson indicator trust indicates users identify the what parts of the packet is safe for the thumb interrupts basically. Coming to the retransmission of selected code book, uh, when the ongoing service is interrupted by the URL's transmission, part of the code book is affected that is transmitted first. So by transmitting the uh, transmitting combining indicator or transport indicator, the receiver can perform the sub symbol combining of the transmitted and the retransmitted code book. Okay. So we can achieve the better um, coding gain by lowering the code of the transmitted uh, code. So come to the protein strategy. Uh, uh, in the if the suppose you can see the main idea of this protein strategy is to ensure the reliability of ongoing services while supporting the URLC transmission. Because uh, the, if the URLC transmission occurs frequently, but having the efficiency of active approach, the strategy will be reduced basically due to frequent retransmission, right? So the main idea of proactive strategy is to ensure the reliability of ongoing services while supporting the relevancy transmission. That is the main idea. So specific schemes uh, are there to support active strategy um, that uh, uh, include maybe robust improvement and resource service areas. So what I mean by robust improvement, that is to robust improvement by intentional low budget by adding extra parity bit. Okay. So this robust improvement uh, is uh, to reduce the initial factor of non-URL packet the patient intentionally needs the code here. Okay. So, um, the employing operator operation code to the non-URL packets. So, since the URLC data transmission interferes non-URL this robust implement approach can help in reducing the packet error of non-URL That is the first thing. Coming to the resource sharing, uh, this is this strategy supports the ongoing data channel and the URLC data channel simultaneously. So uh, basically, multiple uh, antenna or beam domain techniques are employed for this purpose. So basically, the spatial layer uh, bank of the channel are divided into then what happens? One part of the layer is used for MBB and other URLs. So if there is no extra special layer, then the power domain non-orthogonal transmission may be applied also. So uh, this uh, diagram here, uh, this comparison diagram in the right hand side, that is the uh, retransmission of the selected code book. You can see the uh, retransmission of the selected code book. Uh, transmission that outperforms the LT hack scheme in a large margin, basically achieving 32% gain in uh, throughput. But as to substantial parity over it, to observe that the robust improvement scheme suffers from throughput loss about 17% uh, over the reactive strategy. So uh, that is a comparison here. So, uh, of the world uh, strategies used uh, for the solution to the coexistence problem. So, coming to the uh, 
key enablers. It gives an overview, basically, it gives an overview of the key enablers. So, uh, key enablers for low latency and high reliability communication, um, it gives an overview that is highlighted here. So, a latency, basically, we see here latency. Um, uh, uh, in uh, here, that is tragic in the x-axis and uh, reliability in the y-axis. And here, the URL LC enablers, URL LC is specified here. That is the best of what we can say. What are the key enablers for uh, this latency requirements? It's clearly mentioned reliability and the enablers for URL LC. So, Basically, you can say the latency breakdown uh, is a deterministic and random components that are either fixed or scaled with new number of nodes. We can say so deterministic component defines the minimum latency, whereas the random components impact all distribution and more specifically uh, the requirements. Required. So deterministic latency components consist of what it is called. The time to transmit information and the overhead parity bits, reference signal, control data, and also the waiting time between the transmission. Whereas the random components include time to transmit information. Okay, so and overhead when necessary, like keeping delay random backups on the processing you know, computing delays. So uh, the enablers are coming back to the key enablers. The short TL, that is the short frame structure and hybrid automatic repeat request. So reducing the TTI duration, um, that is one millisecond TLT, what was there, to 0.1 to 5 milliseconds in the 5 chain you are. So that is using fewer WebDM symbols for TL, and we are shortening the WebDM symbols via. You discuss by wide subtitle spacing. RGL has considered lowering the half round trip time. All this use the latency. This is because less time is needed to have enough hard transmission to meet a reliability target. So, so that is this uh, reduce effort. What happens if you reduce the everything symbol duration? That will increase the superior space. So fewer resource blocks are available in the frequency domain, causing more queuing effect. So on the flip side, I can see here, on the flip side, the subtitle duration introduces more control over it, thereby reducing capacity lower that is the Lower availability of resources for all the uh, URL LC transmission. So, this sorting can be overcome using grant free transmission in the opt-in, which uh, we are going to address also. So, in the downlink, longer you are needed at a higher port road, low to cope up with non negotiable queuing delay, basically. Then the, in, in the another is of uh, the URLC that is same with URLC multiplayer also. So using a static or semi resource partitioning between EMTB and uh, URLC transmission will be preferable in terms of latency reliability viewpoint. It is efficient in terms of maybe system resource utilization. So we need it. Dynamic multiplexing scheme. So, achieving system reliability for your LC more frequency domain resources, uh, which need to be allocated to an opt-in transmitter instead of boosting power or narrow band resources. So, no, basically, wide resources are needed for your LC uplink transmission to achieve high reliability with low latency. And in addition to that, uh, it can go for many intelligent schemes to preempt, as discussed, to preempt the uh, this one, uh, uh, preempt other scheduled traffic with a low latency packet 
rights in the middle of the frame as also to stop the puncturing of current AMBB transmission. At the same time, AMBB traffic should be minimally impacted when maximizing the URLC out of capacity. So these are all uh, key enablers. So coming to the uh, 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 this grant free as I was discussing the enabler, the grant free as is mentioned here, grant one of the key enabler is grant free transmission here. So grant free transmission for uplink URLs. So it is a transmission uh, scheme without scheduling request as you see here. So and dynamic grant. So what happens? The arrival for design of grant free transmission. Advantage is that it reduces the waiting time for scheduling grant to support that slow latency and so also it avoids reduce resources. So, grant are capable of providing significant low latency and high level label at 10 to the minus 5 even in the load. So, that is here you can see. Uh, grant based, as you can see here in the diagram, first one is the grant based uh, service. Current priority is uh, um, this uh, in the thing, I believe, this special in the thing. Current LT utilization scheduling based on this grant fee, grant based scheduling as specified here. So, this it is a this conventional grant based scheduling is initiated by the UV, right? With access request to the network in which the station can respond by issuing a grant through a random process procedure. So I saw here. So what happens? This type of scheduling request trigger transmission would take at least n milliseconds before starting the data transmission. So, which is actually far from your LLC latency requirement. So hence, uh, this grant free access has been proposed in the um, 5G. So, this extensively actually is used in GPP uh, plan. So, cope up with the your LLC requirements in the optimal transmission. So, in the optimal Grant free access as stated in here. You the small packet can transmit data along with required control information in the first day of transmission itself. What happens? It can uh, reduce um, resource allocation and data transmission as the schedule based and the grant stream step in grant based time that removed. So, coming to the another uh, um, here, this grant free nomad. So, this grant free nomad is significantly reducing the signaling uh, uh, overheads and air interface latency without decreasing the reliability. So, with actually, as is seen, more than two users can be stored at the same time using the and same frequency resource. So basically, this graph you know, has advantage because it covers the resource allocation conditions when the traffic load is heavy. So that helps us to reduce the latency without loss in reliability. That's the advantage. So increased reliability with collision reduced. This is a graph free norma as uh, more than two users. So coming to another key enable. So uh, we can uh, see here that uh, it's a one device learning and artificial intelligence at the network. So uh, this uh, AI at the network page, as uh, today we are also, uh, the previous lecture was on uh, its computing. Uh, resource allocation. So, this unconditional machine learning and AI at the network edge 
I you know that machine learning is strong. This is the ultimate incentive. And so we have a distributed framework, machine learning framework here. So uh, basically, as you know, that machine learning, uh, it is, it ties at the, uh, it is the, uh, you can say, foundation of proactive and low latency network. Because additional implementation is based on the percept of a single node in a centralized fashion. We access to the global data set and massive of storage and computing. So uh, uh, basically, the output is adequate, inadequate, can say, if you consider a latency sensitive and high reliability application. So, distributed machine learning approach, it was introduced by Leku Nanjiri. So, uh, so, this distributed machine learning approach. That mandates say novel scalable and distributed machine learning framework in which the training data describing the problem is stored in distributed fashion. You can see it is stored at the base device A servers, all AS devices in connected here, eight devices. So we have a deep learning framework at the A server, as well all A servers in distributed fashion, as well as the deep learning. Framework at the to solve the uh, optimization problems at the data center. So uh, we this uh, train data in the interconnect the major aspects. This so that is one of the key enablers for this URL SEO. Then coming to the another key enable that is uh, network slicing. So explain about this. So what this network slicing refers to the process of slicing a physical network into logical soft networks. Optimized for specific applications in which the world is developing. Distributed um, dedicated resources for particles, very many applications like vehicle to vehicle communication and industrial automation. So, transporting network slices with uh, stringent reliability guarantees for all this that means for this mission critical application. So, um, because uh, there will be difficulty in modeling and predicting, giving data with very high accuracy. So, for instance, if you say in industrial automation, going to the diverse set of uh, requirements, one slice may be allocated for a, let's say, high definition window task to a person, remote monitoring process or robot. And another slice may provide ultra reliable transmission between uh, your sensors, controllers, actuators. Okay, so you can see here uh, how the um, this station that is located here that locates the resources to all type of services, all three classes of services, maybe URLC and MMTC, and you see the opportunities of resources like. Uh, Cache computing and communication resources they are um, given uh, how they are uh, allocated in slice uh, in the slice manner for MPP, URLC, and MPC. So, as for this, so for network slicing, that is a major enabler for URLC also. Now, coming to the fragmented datums. In your LLC, uh, uh, this uh, first is the system design. Setups. You can see here the various system design. So your LLC features actually several system design setups like uh, finite versus large block length. Okay, because the low latency application is small block length, there will always be a probability that the transitions fail. Due to noise, maybe deep feeding, or interference. We discuss the various issues, factors. 
So, um, in this case, the maximum code rate is going to be lower than the standard rate. So, uh, when transmitting information based on the coded packet spanning uh, channel uses, so uh, for high reliability, data must be encoded at a rate which is significantly lower than the standard size. So, uh, considering that, uh, uh, a theoretical framework for modeling the performance systems due to short response, finite block length, and interference that need to be considered. Then uh, spectral efficiency versus latency. So actually low latency in say, spectral efficiency penalty due to maybe due to harm and shorter TDI. So a system alteration of spectral efficiency versus latency in a and broadcast system taking into account, I mean, take into account busty packet. Busty packet arrival or a mixture of low latency and delay traveling traffic. And uh, maybe the channel fading and multi is missing. So low latency transmission on the can be achieved with uh, using uh, you know single slot slotted low mass transmission strategy. So that is possible. So that is also a trade-off. Then third one is the device energy consumption versus latency. So a fundamental trade-off actually it is a fundamental trade-off that is the relationship between device energy consumption and latency. Then energy expenditure versus reliability. So higher reliability requires uh, several means several low power transmission in one high lab, high power transmission. So it depends upon the diversity order that can be achieved and either independent or correlated fading. So uh, that is the head of is needed there. Then the reliability versus latency and rate. So they will speaking higher reliability requires high latencies due to real transmission. But uh, there could be cases where both are optimized in terms of data rates. So that will guarantee higher rates in lower reliability and vice versa. Case. Then SNR versus diversity, that is another trend of experience here. So fundamental question is actually there. A funda very fundamental question is how does the SNR requirement decrease as a function of network nodes and security order? And whether the use of higher frequency bands help more or less diversity that has to be looked into also. And how much SNR is needed to compensate for time bearing channels, bad fitting events? So, besides, you can see how does reliability scale with the number of links or nodes. So, all these steps are needed. And the last one is the short and long TDA versus control over it. So TDI duration should be adjusted according to user specific radio channel conditions and of course the of service requirements to compensate for the control load. So that need to be considered. So different TDI sizes to type of um, and basically we are um, uh, for your reliability. The important uh, uh, requirements attend to reliability through. So the uh, uh, reliability that means uh, structure based techniques, diversity based techniques and also the source use based techniques. So combiningly, so we have to do a trade -offs in the same office. Now, uh, um, uh, uh, this one, um, in case these scholars have undertaken, we have taken some research work in Mola. Just I will, uh, very fast, I will cover. So we have proposed a source allocation scheme based on joint metric of the minimum achievable rate of AMP and optimal URL demand for minimizing the overall throughput loss so uh, we have uh, got uh, some interesting results. So this proposed scheduling and resource allocation scheme is compared to a baseline of random scheduler. 
So I have found that by 60% cases, the data rate of NBB users for the proposed method is more than 15 NBBs, and uh, uh, the reliability of NBB agents in, with increasing URL is low percent. And uh, one found that the reliability of EMB transmission in proposed scheduling method is 2.06% higher, and it's 17.3% higher in high URL and load condition when compared with the when proposed scheme is compared with the random scheduling scheme. Okay. So that is one of the work. And another research work uh, carried out that is Implement of outreach performance with power optimization for wireless using robot. So, NOMA can fulfill wireless requirement as discussed by offering data transmission at higher rates, increased spectral efficiency and reliability. So, here we have utilized the general drilling techniques for violent block length data transmission. So, minimization of overlapping probability. In code error probability and queuing delay violation error. That is actually how by optimize allocating power to the URL resources. So this optimal power allocation is done considering the throughput and reliability criteria of URL. So some interesting results I can uh, achieve here. So this open number for minimizing the outage probability is presented here. The artist property was in the center, then two and energy efficiency. So, from these results, um, we observed that the proper CNOMA system, system has achieved a better performance for minimization of the property than compared to the NOMA NOMA schemes. Okay, this is the operating NOMA the proper scheme. So, it is a fair throughput so far at higher SLR conditions, so it achieves better energy efficiency compared to the other schemes also. Now coming to the evolution, now I will, I'm coming to the end of my, almost end of my lecture, and I will uh, conclude with this uh, one or two slides, of course. So, uh, I see here that uh, evolution of uh, cellular networks, you have seen uh, most of you must have seen this figure. So, what is upcoming? What is beyond 5G? Let's see that. So, beyond 5G is uh, uh, maybe beyond 5G or beyond 60 that will contribute to fill the gap that is 2020 society and business demands what 5G can support. So, new spectrum, disrupt technology, cell. S networks or cell free network, then disaggregation at virtual of network functions, then energy efficiency and pervasive AI. Okay. So uh, this um, pervasive AI on that uh, six G pervasive or collective AI, that is a variant, it will be at the core of six G. And it is to act as the most important enabling technologies for 6G. So, deep learning, the most powerful AI techniques at present is, however, based, it is based on deep neural network, which uh, relies on training in a centralized fashion. So, 6G is moving towards a more distributed architecture, like you see the foreground. For and handling millions and billions of end to end communication anywhere around the world will be. So, distributed cloud structure essentiates training to be done at the network edge and uh, it will handicap the option of deep learning basically. Although the recently developed you know, federated learning partly addresses this problem by, because it can allow training who take place at distributed locations. So this is for a distributed implementation of for centralized learning and communications between distributed cloud and a central network manager. 
of Edinburgh London for accreditation is much uh, less tough because updates in the user level are addressed before sending back to the central manager, of course. So this is the basic we can see here. Another uh, thing is that in 6G, the cell free network. So you know, you can see the UAB okay, drone network. So the full potential of UAB wireless network drone cells will be realized. And their applications will be widely extended to mobilize the network issue and integrating you know, the cell free maximum to achieve a truly cell free network. So in that uh, latency criteria achieved. So to take the advantage of um, you know, fluid cells, you can say fluid cells uh, formed by UAVs, the optimization of resource allocation, trajectory, content caching, user association that uh, can be achieved also. So in 6G, UAVs do not have large flying positions to provide radio coverage, but be um, gun providers and computing servers. So basically, it will bring a lot of synergy with other emerging technologies. So AI will take the network uses and to learn and dynamically find the uh, uh, best path for UAV and also it will optimize uh, the other parameters. So dynamic configuration of network topology will be possible in that. So these are the requirements and features of 5G versus 6G. These are the KPIs comparison 5G versus 6G. All the KPIs uh, you can see here on the um, GPPS, like individual data rate, then uh, downlink data rate, data rate. Then mobile Then of course we are going for okay. Then the use cases in terms of use cases also, there is a comparison here amongst the between the 5G and 6G. Now, what will be the Next generation wireless. That is the final thing uh, concept here, which I need to bring here. So, <clears> the <throat> next generation wireless, which is kind of ultra reliable, low latency communication. Okay. As you see, you have a nice tangle uh, uh, here. Uh, seven, uh, uh, inside the uh, field, that means X URLC is given here. So, uh, this is the next generation URLC. It is based on three core concepts. So, it is divided here um, at, um, three, into three core concepts, you can say. That is uh, um, because, because it will leverage recent advantages of machine learning for a faster and reliable data driven prediction and uh, it will use the uh, radio frequency RF and non RF modalities for modeling and combating uh, very rare events without sacrificing the spectral efficiency. And uh, communication and control co design as opposed to the communication earlier, this is now we are, we are having the communication centric. 5G RLC. So next we will be joint communication and control co design. So in uh, uh, the three core concepts, uh, that is the first one is the predictive RLC. So 5G RLC, we can say it is reactive in nature. And it is built upon the availability of no station channel, uh, traffic model. And uh, questioning, questioning the adequacy of the definition of reliability. So, in contrast, the exchange uh, RLC is essentially predictive. It will leverage the constant advancement in machine learning. It will enable highly accurate prediction channels. 
traffic and other key performance indicators. So the second core concept is non radio frequency adherence. Okay, so in that 5G parallels each are addressed. And uh, it requires investing wireless resources for child probing and estimation. But, uh, by contrast, this extreme URL will expand non RF modalities such as RGB, you can see such as here with RGB uh, camera. This RGB images to channel prediction for channel prediction. And uh, this data provides uh, provide rich features for predicting extreme and certain events, maybe blockages, which cannot be done with the current RF based solutions because due to the lack of physical or expensive activities, limited resources, uh, this experience uh, reconfigure the intelligent surfaces, IS. And the surfaces to tune and child randomness by manipulating surface reflections while using higher energy efficiency. So, this non radio frequency area URLC will be based on that concept. Then, the core concept is control co design URLC. This is called co co. -co. Control co design, you are let's say communication and control co design. So, in uh, mm -hmm. GDP, uh, communication reliability is counted by counting the erroneous packets divided by the total transmitted packets during the observed time period. So, in contrast, extreme to our LLC, it will care about whether consecutive packet errors or losses disrupt the control operations. So understanding control dynamics provide, provide a natural opportunity to relax the very stringent latency and reliability requirements, making communication and control for design a core concept basically in extreme dependency. So this is um, this is where I wanted to end my slide. With the extreme URLC, that is the 6G, the upcoming 6G. So, uh, these are the references of the various sources I have placed for making the slides and I've taken the pictures from those resources. So, this is listed in the reference. Yeah. So, finally, thank you all for being present to me. Uh, for hearing such a last hour to me, giving last hour to me. And uh, I uh, really am really thankful to my PhD scholar and Puna who has helped me in preparing the slides. And also all the PhD scholars in my lab for helping me whenever I needed the help. I also thank uh, Professor Suman there who is the co-coordinator of this uh, webinar for his constant support and help in organizing this event. So any questions may be addressed to me now. Any questions? Ma'am, there is a question in the chat box. Yes, I see her box. Uh, okay for network connectivity issue. So as we know, estimating future UIs is very difficult task. It depends on past decisions and channel dynamics. So that's what I guess. Yes, it's very interesting. So I appreciate Anisha for asking me this question. So yes, you are correct. Uh, it, uh, that's, that's what I came that uh, where AI is coming into pictures. So machine use uh, machine learning framework for prediction models. So we can predict. Uh, we can uh, the uh, all the future uh, channel dynamics and uh, fast predictions can be taken. So that is the advantage of using the machine learning approaches in the future. So it's 
another important question mark my other question will be while minimizing age of information enables your relevancy do you think after rl can be a solution yes of course so that was the federated machine learning uh, which i uh, just uh, telling but due to time shortage i couldn't explain it framework though i have a slide on that so but i could so that so of course so this aptitude model after the tail so it can be solution so definitely it will enable it is a key enabler for uh, minimizing the age of information Any more questions from participant um i have a question yes it's my place Um, uh, for the plots that you got for cooperative noma and uh, the outage probability of cooperative noma that it was better than the ordinary noma uh, did you consider a two user case scenario like for a near user or far user or how many users were considered for that ma'am yes 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 we considered for two user scenario five ma'am that we compared yes So, ma'am, were there near users and far users? Uh, that was the case, or far users? Ha, far users. Then Only how many? Of, how many of them were near users and far users, ma'am? Ah, uh, yeah. So two and two. We have considered that. Okay, so ma'am, cooperative noma was performing better than ordinary. Better. Yes. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank so, you. So, I implement uh, this one. Illustrations that that is indicated. We have the reference paper also. You may refer to that paper for details. Okay, thank you.